behind today. Yeah. 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 Go check my clock. All right, I have a ton of announcements today. Bear with me till I get through all of this. And whatever I miss, we'll fix along the way. celebrating Holy Communion today. Also, the Strawberry Festival is going on at the Warrior Run Historic Church today. So if you like ice cream and strawberries, that's the place to be. Following worship today, right here in the front, if we could, we want to have a very brief council meeting. Uh, we just need to get a couple of issues straightened out and taken care of. It should take no more than five minutes. So if you're a part of council, do it. Come and see me up front after church, okay? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Ken Bloom is heading up the French fry stand for the 4th of July in Watsontown. Now, I know everybody's tired of French fries right now, okay? But in a couple of weeks, you won't remember this. It'll be fine. So we do need help with that. It is only one day, of course. And uh, if you can sign up for shifts, that would be fantastic. So if you have any questions, See you can. The sign-up sheet is in the narthex. There is no Sunday school today. Uh, Lauren Marziel is going to be taking care of Sunday school throughout the summer. So if you don't see Lauren here, we probably aren't having Sunday school that day. They are away at the moment. May, please make note that our second hymn is found in your blue hymnal. So just in case anybody would get sort of miss that. Uh, just be aware of that now. Thank you to everyone for doing such a wonderful job this week and making the carnival an absolute success. I think we had a good night every night, from what I understand. I know when I was there it was good, and uh, I think every night was. So thank you to all for that. Now, tomorrow, the Lawyer Run Watson Town Carnival starts. So get ready to go in there and eat. Okay, speaking of carnivals, we're going to start with Julie. Julie's got some numbers for us this morning. Two more, come on. So as Pastor Don said, uh, thank you to everyone that came out and supported us or helped work in the stands. Um, we did have a very successful week. Um, our expenses this year were higher than previous years. Um, so our expenses um, at this time till we get um, all the bills in we do have uh, the propane bill yet to come in um, totaled seven thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars so it does take a considerable amount of money to to run our stand um, but we took in twenty thousand six hundred and three dollars the entire week so that gives us a, a profit of twelve thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars for the week <laughs> Julie, you'll probably have to help Ken with a few things for the 4th of July to get him in the right direction with that as well. All right. Kids Cafe, Carol. Yeah, so I just want everybody to know we had the best first week we've ever had for Kids Cafe. A lot of new faces in town, a lot of new kids. We averaged 50 kids a day. We had 54 the very first day. So... I just thank everyone for the support and continued support to be great. We still do need Wranglers uh, for Wayne. He'll be physically fit to the end of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a lot of it. Um, Sue Hefty, who used to help us a lot, can't help as much this summer. So we still really do need Wranglers. If not, we get have to do it ourselves. I do have a young man that needs to set the park, a teenager that helps on the park, which is helpful. So anybody that knows anyone that would be willing to help, even just one day a week, one day a month, something that would help fill in the gaps. So the Boy Scouts might be a good help to you if they're available? If someone would be available. We have found asking kids like that, they don't have ways to get there because mom and dad's working. There's okay. a lot of things, you know, unless they're older. Now mm -hmm. Tommy uh, will come down. He's a young man who's helped us off and on through the years. But he's, uh, he cooks it 
Boy Scout camp and work for Boy Scout camp in the summer. So he won't be down to help. He helps some this week. So if anybody's able to help with that, that would be a, a great thing to get involved in. It is a little bit heavy, it is a little bit lugging, but we can't wear poor old Wayne out. We just cannot <laughs> do it to him. We need him too bad. All right, the last thing I have is the celebration that's coming up on July 29th. That's Saturday, July 29th, for paying off the mortgage. All the arrangements are being put in place. I think it's going to be a great success. I was asked about this this morning, and I verified it. Folks who are part of this church family who are not members, <laughs> you're included in this. Just because you're not a member doesn't mean you're not part of this church family. So you are included in this. That sign-up sheet is out there as well, so we know how many chickens need to be made. So please sign up for that soon, because we'll have to get those orders around, right? Okay. All right. Okay. I think I got what I have here. Anybody else? Yes? The Whoopi uh, Pie orders are due today. I have to send them out to the bakers so they can get started on it, because the rest of the week is week. Okay. That's for the youth group. Yes. Fundraiser. Very right. good. All right. Anything else? All right, before we start here, one piece of sad news. Delroy Moser passed away yesterday morning. Uh, I did talk with Nancy yesterday. She was doing quite well when I spoke with her, but uh, I want everybody to know that ahead of time, that when I call out his name here after Bitmar prayers, that uh, you're not surprised or shocked at that point, okay? All right, if you're able, please rise. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. I forgot one more thing. Sylvia is going to be helping me out today. She's our lay leader. She will step in uh, if, in case I can't be here or if a, lay, or a supply person can't be here. So you will at least be able to have a worship service. But to keep Sylvia up in pace with everything, i got to have her come in and practice with me every once in a while to keep her sharp. So she will be assisting me today. So that's what's going on. All right. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. And when men by those who eat, we have to walk. does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the source of all life, but by the power of your Spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing, and the promise is worthless. Because the law brings wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our Father in the sight of God, in whom we, He believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that are, were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Sinners. 
On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then John's disciple came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. Thanks be to God. Praise you, Lord. So many times when we come to this passage in our lectionary, we jump right on the paralyzed man, the healing of Jesus. But I want to talk to you today about Matthew's call to ministry. Matthew had one of those most hated jobs in all of Israel. He was considered a traitor and a sinner to the Jews for selling out to the Roman Empire because he collected taxes for Rome from his own countrymen. When Jesus found Matthew, he was working and doing his job. But Jesus saw something in Matthew that no one else in all of Israel could see. Christ's call to Matthew was simple, but powerful. And Matthew answered quickly as he heard the Lord say, Come and follow me. The greatest life we can live is a life de dedicated to Jesus. It is so sad to see many who will hear the call, just as Matthew did, and then not follow. How many blessings do we miss when that happens? How far will we go astray before we turn back to God? Or maybe we would even become completely lost. We each have our own story to tell about eluding God's call in our life. Matthew was so grateful for the call of God upon his life that he made a great feast in honor of Jesus and his disciples. The problem was that the only friends that Matthew could invite were those of the same social circle. They were considered outsiders, sinners, and traitors in the eyes of the Jewish culture. Some of them were very likely Gentiles, non-Jews, from other Roman cities who had moved to Jerusalem to work for the Roman government. You see, it wasn't such a terrible job to be a tax collector for Rome. As such, they were considered heathens and unclean by the religious hierarchy of Israel. The Pharisees, in whom I refer to, were offended by the fact that Jesus and his disciples went to eat with this basket of deplorables. The Pharisees view of righteousness was completely centered upon the law of Moses and had no consideration for the spirit of the law, only the legalistic terms and ordinances. They weren't saved, they weren't in a right relationship with God, but they sure did think they were. They weren't saved by any means, they didn't really understand what that term meant. 
But yet the Pharisees lived this strict law, under, lived this strict life under the law. <clears throat> they claimed to have a special relationship with God but had very little tolerance for anyone who disagreed with them. And certainly, anyone who disobeyed the law would be immediately judged and discarded. These self-righteous religious leaders could not see their own sin. They did not know that they were truly without God, and they could not see that they weren't even really trying to reach him. Their thoughts were that anyone who really was righteous had no right to associate with the heathens unless, don't you love that? Unless or but? Unless business absolutely required. They never realized that Jesus was doing the Father's business, and that required him to go to Matthew's house and eat. Jesus knew the Pharisees' thoughts, and he heard their self-righteous indignation. We may fool ourselves, we may even fool the world, but we can never fool God. He knows where we are, what we're doing, every whim in our heart, and every thought in our mind. It's scary? You all proclaim it. We sin against God in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Now don't those words take on a different meaning now? Christ's words to them were cutting and shaming. Jesus has no patience and will not stop pointing out the cold, hard truth to those who claim to be righteous, righteous but are not. Christ's words proclaim what his purpose and his business are, and that is to be the great physician to the sin-sick and the perishing souls of this world. For that purpose, he was born. For that purpose, he lived. And for that purpose, he would soon die upon a cross. Before Jesus can heal the sinner's heart, that sinner must come to the realization that he or she needs God. Human beings must come to that understanding before the healing process can begin. Consider this, how can Jesus save people who don't know that they are spiritually sick in their sins? How can Jesus save people who deny their need to be well or to get well? How can Jesus save people who think they are already saved? There is no price we can pay, no deed we can do, not a good enough life that can be lived, and no obedience to the law that can sufficiently save us. Salvation comes to us only by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Nothing more and nothing less. The entire sacrificial system of the law of Moses was meant to do one thing and only one thing. And think of it this way, as though it's a big interactive motion picture of our true spiritual condition and the portent of what God must do for us. Think of this, the blood was representative of the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ. Those sacrifices showed us that we could never kill enough lambs, sacrifice enough bulls, or shed enough blood to earn our righteousness. Those sacrifices point us to the cross of Christ and his shed blood as the one and only rescue from our sin. 
those Pharisees, those experts, could not and would not accept the fact that their self-righteousness wasn't sufficient. They could never believe and accept that their sacrifices, all their perceived work in the Jewish religion was not sufficient. All the prayers that they memorized, all the rituals they observed with absolute faithfulness. Nope. Don't count. No good. They deluded and spiritually blinded themselves in their own man-made legalism. yourselves. It is a hard thing for us to fall down on our hands and knees and our face to the earth and admit that we are sinners. That's a hard thing for us human beings. That's an uncomfortable position to be in until we realize that we are truly sinners in the hands of a holy God and that all we can do is beg for his mercy. I think I said to you last week we are beggars laying at the door or the gate of God's garden waiting for some bread. That's who we are. Jesus said I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. The call was for Matthew and for all of us that are in the same condition as Matthew, including all those down through the ages. And Jesus is still calling to each and every one of us yet today, come follow me. Come leave your life of sin and separation behind. Come, learn from me, and I will give you a new life worth living. Come, be my disciple. Duplicate my love and my mercy and my concern for lost souls. Come, join me as my brother and sister. Come, do it now, and begin to experience the presence of God in your life. Come, for the time is near for my return. Come while there is still time. Come with all your sins and all your failures. Confess it, repent of it, and be washed clean and made righteous through Christ's sacrifice for you. The call of Matthew is the same call for each of us right here, right now, today. I can't make it any easier than this. I hope I've hit everybody in this room today. So now I must ask, have you heard the call of Matthew in your life? Has God called your name? If you are listening to this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then understand that you are getting that call from God right now through the work of the Holy Spirit who is convicting your soul and tugging at your heart right now to do something, to finally do the right thing. The devil will try every trick in the book to stop you. But I'm telling you nothing, absolutely nothing, can stop you from coming to Christ if you will just trust him and follow him. Satan is a liar, and he is powerless against God's call in your life. So it is time. It is time to stop screwing around with your eternity. And I'm putting it out there. Stop playing a game and come to Jesus. It is time for you to be like Matthew the tax collector, who became Saint Matthew, the disciple, the apostle, and the gospel writer for Jesus. 
God can do amazing and miraculous things in our lives. But we've got to be willing to hear his call, listen to his promises, and then simply by the promise, hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. <clears throat> Charlotte McClintock, Alice 
Allison Petrus, Bev Stamen, Nancy Quarles, Barry, Sonny and Molly Moser, Anna Seckman, Paul Watson, D and Roger Robinalt, Nancy Moser, Gary and Pat Derry, Larry Seibert, Pat Rickert, Wama Groom, Lystra Zimmerman, Kim Ettelman, Linda Weaver, Carol Chapel. And for those others, we pray now. We also pray for the family of Delroy Moser and Miriam Simpson. Bring comfort and peace to their ailing hearts. We pray for the celebrations and joys of the birthdays of Steve Hines, Heath Winters, Ken Bloom, Jean Gold, Robert Chapel, and the anniversaries of Faith and Herbie Hoover, Robert and Carol Chapel, Robert and Connie Hegerman, Gerald and Jean Gold. Bless them richly in this joyous time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O oh God, <clears throat> as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, giving us peace in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will now have the altar. You may be seated.
your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their ending hymn.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.